Hey, welcome to another episode on Security Lens. I'm Victor Mbadeke. Well, Nigerians lately have wondered if there is a new job description for some of our security agencies that will have for a very long time deviated from protecting lives and property uh, to now becoming poopers in the hands of some elites. Well, take a look at these pictures and tell us what uh, you make of it. A conflict advisor allowed in Hashim is yet again with us today and we will be discussing uh, this and other topical issues on the show. But first, let's take uh, some security news. We'll be right back. Humanitarian aid expert David Belele has appealed to other NGOs to assist the government to cater for internally displaced persons who are in dire need of relief materials. David says IDPs who have continuously suffered neglect in several camps in the country due to insurgency and banditry should not be left at the mercies of the government. I, I can tell you vividly what uh, we experienced after, uh, after the NSAC protests where uh, most uh, states uh, food uh, uh, houses were invaded by citizens because of the fact that our government are hidden uh, uh, food that belongs to citizens of the country. The leadership of Nigeria can swing into action to ensure that they correct some of the mistakes, understand the point, where funds needed uh, given for a particular cause uh, should be utilized the way it's given. They can do better and also they can come up with better way to alleviate poverty, giving us uh, food material and also clothing and, and shelter and all that. The Inspector General of Police, Usman Baba, has confirmed an upgrade of the Nigerian Police Force Crime Reporting Mobile Application, known as MPF Rescue Me app, which is valuable to effectively report emergencies, criminal activities and professional misconduct of police officers. The police board says the app has an emergency button which alerts operatives at the Nigerian Police and the National Command and Control Center. He encourages Android and iOS users to download the app from the various app stores and register their details. The Nigerian Army has said troops of Operation Desert Sanity have uncovered the wreckage of a crashed Alpha Jet aircraft in Sambisa Forest, Bono State. In a statement, the Army said the aircraft NAV-475 had gone off the radar with two crew members on it on March 31, 2021. The RGP Usman Baba has ordered the immediate distribution of additional batches of uniform, kids and body armors for police personnel, especially for inspectors and other ranks. He says the items must get to every member of the cadet and other ranks of the force. A total of 253 operational and emergency vehicles for police formations across zonal and state commands were also procured. The Minister of Transportation, Roti Miyamichi, says that nautical products obtained from hydrography would support Nigeria's Blue Economy Project and assist maritime security agencies mobilize resources at critical places. Amichi, who was the special guest of honor, said this at the flag of ceremony of the indigenous survey and charting of Nigeria's offshore waters by Nigerian Navy ship. NNS Lana, which held at NNS Beecroft, Apapa, Lagos. Currently, it is estimated that over 90% of global trade volumes is conducted by sea. This implies that most countries of the world today will be adversely affected if ships could not safely navigate the seas, ports and harbor approaches to deliver goods and services. Hydrographic services provided in form of charts maritime safety information, type tables, and other navigational publications offer essential information to facilitate safe navigation of ships from one part of the sea to the other. As this vessel commences the survey of Nigeria's offshore today, it is expected that it will provide the necessary enablers to support the federal government's presidential economic diversification initiative through improved maritime security, maritime trade and transport, as well as improved economic prosperity of Nigeria's citizens, Nigerian citizens. 
Accordingly, this survey ship, in conjunction with similar vessels to be acquired by the federal government of Nigeria, would, in a few years from now, completely survey Nigeria's offshore waters and produce accompanying indigenous nautical charts and publications to facilitate improved maritime shipping, security, and economic development in Nigeria. It is also expected that at the end of this survey and charting campaign, up-to-date indigenous nautical products will be available to facilitate smooth takeoff of the new deep sea ports that are under construction at various, various parts of our offshore areas. Additionally, completion of this survey and charting operation would equally boost confidence of most mariners to increase patronage of Lagos, Port Harcourt, and Calabar ports, just as they worry Sapele and other ports that are hitherto operating at lowest level would be reactivated. This will provide well over 2 million direct and indirect jobs, increase economic viability of these ports, and ultimately decongest Lagos traffic, as well as reduce pressure on our roads, as more cargo ships will call at the nearest ports to the final destination of the goods and services on board. Furthermore, nautical charts and other publications to be produced from this survey will provide basic information required for further marine scientific research by other government agencies towards exploration and exploitation of resources within Nigeria's offshore and coastal areas. These nautical products would also support Nigeria's Blue Economy Project team, as well as maritime security agencies to mobilize resources at critical places and time of choice for the attainment of set national economic development and national security objectives. It is on this note that I urge all the various stakeholders to seize this historic opportunity to work harmoniously and assiduously towards the completion of this important national survey within the shortest possible time. I'm aware that some of you have one form of information or the other which you obtain during the performance of your legitimate businesses within our waters. This is the time to volunteer this information to the Navy in accordance with international best practice to ensure that no vital information is omitted when the charts are compiled. To the Nigerian Navy and its hydrographic agency, I'm confident this, this survey will be conducted in line with international best practices as the federal government of Nigeria has given and will continue to give you all the necessary support. I have no doubt in my mind that you're willing and willing, able and capable of discharging this enormous responsibility. Your recent production of internationally accepted paper and electronic navigational charts of Lagos Harbor and other parts of our backwaters. The Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Awa Gambo, said that this would be the first time that a Nigerian-owned survey vessel manned by Nigerian Navy personnel will be conducting a systematic hydrographic survey of our offshore waters. I must not fail to mention that to further consolidate the capacity of Nigerian Navy hydrographers, the Nigerian Navy and the University of Lagos last month signed a memorandum of understanding for partnership in hydrographic survey. I have no doubt that the survey will be conducted in line with international standard. At this juncture, let me reiterate that today will go down in history as the day Nigeria finally began the process of taking ownership of the survey and charting of its coastal and offshore areas, which are critical to our socioeconomic development, national security, and maritime defense, as well as the safety of navigation in our waters. Notably, similar process of taking ownership of the survey and charting of our waters started within Nigeria's backwaters in 2019, when the Nigerian Navy surveyed and produced the first indigenous chart of Lagos Harbor, which has since replaced the British Admiralty chart heated to use for navigation in this area. Other indigenous navigational charts covering our backwaters have also been 
have also have been pursued since then. This includes charts covering Ikorodu Channel from Mapapa to Ikorodu and charts covering Badagri Creek from Tinkan Island to Ogunkobo. At the moment, Nigerian Navy survey teams are surveying Lekki Lagoon to link up with Lagos Lagoon in order to produce navigable charts linking Lekki to Ikorodu. Navy survey teams are also conducting joint survey of River Niger from Lokoja to Brutu in conjunction with National Inland Waterways Authority and Nigerian Import Export Bank. Hence, the flag of ceremony we are witnessing today, as well as completed and ongoing surveys within our maritime space clearly demonstrate a whole of government's approach towards building a national hydrographic capacity for improved maritime security and safety, as well as robust maritime trade for improved prosperity, economic development, and general well-being of Nigerians. On this note, I want to thank the President Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, Grand Commander of the Federal Republic, through the Minister of Defense for the chosen Nigerian Navy ship Lano and an additional 35 meter boat under construction for the Navy in France. I wish to assure you and the good people of Nigeria that the Nigerian Navy will make judicious use of these assets and others to be added in future to facilitate navigable routes within Nigeria's maritime space through carefully planned systematic surveys and charting program. You can now stream Silverbird News 24 live on mobile app. All you need to do is to download Silverbird News 24 app from Google Play Store on your Android devices and App Store or on your Apple devices. Tap the live button at the bottom bar to watch us live 24-7. You can enjoy all our news programs including PJ News and Program. Silverbird News 24. The news never stops. And hey, welcome back. Saladin, if you can hear me, it's good to have you on the show. And thank you very much for having me. Fantastic. So at what point have the Nigerian police in these instance become nannies or puppets, if you like, uh, other than the original job descriptions of protecting lives and property of Nigerians uh, to which they swore to? We saw what happened uh, just, just about a week ago, uh, a Nigerian police officer carrying food for a particular lawmaker, whatever politician that she is. And we've seen this over time, even at the airports and you know, several cases like, like these. So you, you wonder, have we now changed our, our job description from protecting lives and property to now becoming uh, nannies or puppets in the hands of some of these guys, basically? What do you make of all of this? How did you get here? I, I think it's a dirty slap in the face of Nigerians and particularly the security uh, personnel generally. Uh, what we saw played out uh, some uh, days ago uh, it's not what we have continued to converse against, uh, to say that uh, our security personnel uh, should not be used uh, to becoming uh, errand boys and nannies uh, for the elites. Uh, that in itself is the biggest reason why the issue of protection has become a little bit of a challenge, uh, because most of our guys and personnel uh, who should be protecting uh, generally are basically now uh, becoming drivers and uh, umbrella carriers and bag carriers and drivers uh, for politicians. Uh, and this is actually an elite capture of the society. As fact, it is now becoming a status thing uh, to have retinue of security personnel and detail uh, going around with you at every point. And this is actually uh, very unfortunate. I actually sat and at an event uh, when I saw uh, 16 uh, personnel, uh, a senator, and that for me uh, was an unfortunate instance and a gory sight. Uh, we have also heard uh, that governors have a minimum of 60 uh, personnel that is detailed uh, to protect their affairs families. Now, if you do a math around this and you do uh, the, uh, we have continued to, that, uh, we are already under police, okay? Uh, and of course, the UN standard had said we should have one. 400 ratio uh, but what we have now is one to over a hundred thousand and the reason why it is because half of the number 
uh, within the police and other security personnel have been posted to VIPs and multinationals. And that in itself is unfortunate, reducing the number of who should be at the disposal of the vulnerable society. And of course, the essence also for the purposes of commercialization and politicization and privatization of our security personnel. This, for me, is actually unfortunate. We have seen situations where the general police in this country at one point was making far above one trillion naira annually uh, from a proceed uh, that come from posting of personnel to multinationals, and that in itself suggests the issue of commercialization. And the question is actually uh, the police uh, and other security agents designed uh, to individually detail uh, 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 VIPs or that they should actually police the, uh, of the entire country. So this has continued to create a little bit of challenge and setback. I have seen it playing out in various communities where bandits have turned it into an, an, an arena and a theater for killing and maiming and actually launching their, hoisting their flags. This is so because we don't have adequate personnel that should be able to police uh, those kinds of spaces. Rather, these men are actually uh, being detailed with VIPs. This is a huge challenge, a classical setback, and should not be seen in modern policing system. The people and the citizen should actually be a priority. What we are seeing playing out now is a pre-colonial policing system where the regime and those within the regime are those who are entitled to policing. Rented policing is what is happening at the detriment of the people, at the detriment of the citizens. I think Nollywood has uh, contributed in, in a way to the spate of ritual killings in our society nowadays. This is why, because I, you know, I see ritual killings as uh, one of the vices that we have in our society now, and uh, you know, there are other social vices apart from that one, like like immorality. You know, you know, most of the content that they dish out are against the core values of our society. So I think in that way. They have. It has, rather. So how do you feel that can be corrected? Well, you talk to the stakeholders in the industry now, that they should stop dishing out such content for us. It doesn't mean a thing. That's not to say that they will not make money. You know, when you begin to make uh, profit at the essence of this uh, society, that's, that's bad. So the, the situation becomes uh, dramatic, and that is what we have around now. And it's not going to work. It's not going to go well for anyone, because Anybody can fall victim of such, even the producers themselves. That's my decision thing. Not what they watch, because we all watch those movies as well. And we don't see everyone doing it. And then, when you watch those movies, you'll notice that even at the end, those people that do those rituals, their end is not good. They end up very badly. So, I wouldn't say it's Nollywood. If there is an employment, I will tell you, this ritualist wouldn't have been existing, even if it will exist. It will be easy to catch some, some of the people that are killing our youth in the society. Well, some people are saying that it's Nollywood. It's what people are watching in Nigeria more. That's why they are doing ritual. No, it's not that. It's not that. It's a habit. As I said, one of the things is unemployment. Not what they are watching in the, in the movie. They are causing the ritualists. They are causing the uh, ritualists in the society. It's unemployment. Breaking news stories, insightful documentaries, news reports from around the globe, and original news content now available 24 hours daily on Star Times Channel 109. Stream live on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Silverbird N24 Live. Follow on Facebook at Silverbird News 24, on Twitter at Silverbird N24, and on Instagram at Silverbird N24. Silverbird News 24, the news never stops. So speaking, uh, uh, talking about um, the so many errors in uh, policing system, uh, remember uh, the suspended DCP Abakari. Uh, of course, uh, he will not just stop making the news for the wrong reasons allowed in. Yeah, I, I, I think it is very clear. But one thing, one concern that I, that, uh, I just hope uh, that the system and the institution will not uh, want to shield this guy. That uh, even whilst uh, he was suspended. We just learned recently uh, after the uh, involvement, his involvement with the drug issue, 
that he was also still uh, uh, carrying out uh, operations on behalf of the Nigerian police in the, through the back door uh, uh, while Nigerians are not. I, I think there is a big rub that we need to deal with within the police institution. That is the reason why it is actually becoming difficult to divorce personnel, you know, from uh, ongoing uh, theatrics uh, that we see playing out. How could you have a suspended officer still carrying out official function? This doesn't add up. It's one question that readily comes to mind. Are there also beneficiaries of all of these nefarious activities within the system? How much of uh, uh, the same abacari are still not uh, noticed yet? Uh, you know, and how can we then uh, create a reform process? And you remember that the issue of police reform has been on for several years. We have talked about it, but there is see, there seemingly uh, seem to be some kind of jinx uh, which we still need with. That particular system requires that we do complete overhaul from regulation to policies to programming to personnel to administration to recruitment posting all the value chain of our policing system needs that we pay a lot more to it how could you have a carry that is suspended still carrying out police function that for me is a big question mark that the ig himself needs to really answer the second thing is that there seems to be some kind of tutorial uh, very known as to how he should go forward to manage the case. Two things. Is it that they are going to shield him from local prosecution, and that is why the conversation around the extradition is also... That is a big question we need to ask. Secondly, is that extradition happening because they want to protect other people who are involved within the system and, and not want so that at least it is not, so that it's just focusing on the case that is at hand with the FBI. The FBI will not be interested in the drug cartel issue in his, they will only be interested in the evidence of evidence that was brought. Is it also an attempt to shield him from all those ongoing combat? So we need to actually pay a lot of a lot more attention. And I think the police service commission hasn't done Okay, and the Nigerian Police Council that is actually chaired by the president needs to completely review uh, some of this function because the president is actually the chairman of the Nigerian Police Council, and all these mem all the state governors are members of this council, which suggests that they have in whatever happens to the entire police force in the country. What are they doing to remedy the issue locally and to provide additional international integrity that should be restored? Because as it now, at the international level, it is a clear mockery, a classical setback, and indeed we don't even know ourselves. And if you remember, Nigeria is currently the vice president of the Interpol. So with this kind of situation, it is just a way of telling the whole world that look, uh, we cannot do this job and effectively, we need to do something differently to be able to get it right again. Fantastic. Uh, Salahuddin Hashim, Conflict Advisor and Security Expert. It's al always, always a pleasure having you on the show. Unfortunately, we don't really have much time on, uh, on our side, but I hope to have you uh, much more again because there's still plenty, plenty to talk about, especially on Abakir, because it does look like an episode uh, that is probably never going to end soon. Thank you very much for having me. And this is where we draw the curtain. Do have a great week and remember to stay out of trouble. I'm Victor Nbandeke. Bye for now.